Hi guys, uh, my name is Song Chen, Chief Engineer at ETS Lingren. Here's my colleague Ivo Wang. Uh, here we're going to uh, present to uh, do a demonstration on how to use the uh, setup here to do a mold filter, cylindrical mold filter site ESWR method. So here's the setup here. Uh, we're doing, uh, the setup is uh, exactly like a normal SVSWR measurements. Uh, we have absorbers on the floor and then over there we have a uh, 3116 ETS 3116 uh, antenna, double ridge waveguide horn, and on this side is a omnidirectional mini biconical antenna. And for this method, we're proposing to use it uh, between 18 and 40 gigahertz. So this is a, a setup here, the antennas cover that frequency range. And over there on the corner over there, we have a vector network analyzer, uh, which is also covering the frequency range of 18 gigahertz to uh, 40 gigahertz. It's all set up. Uh, we have done the cable through calibration, Ivo did that earlier. And uh, it's now set up to do a S21 measurement or S12, depending on which port. I think here maybe we're doing S12. And then uh, it's got uh, 401 points, but that's uh, pretty flexible. It depends on the test requirement. Uh, but right now it's set up to 401 points. And uh, so that this antenna is used as a transmit antenna, just like your normal SVSWR measurement. And this antenna is a receive antenna, so it's got a, uh, a preamplifier uh, connected to it. And so that's all hooked up back to the uh, uh, vector network analyzer. So anything else you want to add? That was pretty much, pretty much it. So at that position, uh, oh yeah, the distance wise, this antenna here is uh, set uh, three meters from the top of that turntable, which is where the uh, antenna is located for the mini biconical antennas. So that's three meter distance. And the, uh, as you can notice that that antenna is actually not at, in the middle of the turntable, so it's actually set at the edge of the turntable. So that's the method itself, is uh, we're gonna do a rotation of that antenna, and uh, we're gonna measure basically like, as if we're doing an antenna pattern measurement. So that antenna here is set at the top of the turntable at zero, we call that zero degrees. And as we start the measurement later, uh, that antenna is going to uh, step through uh, the whole uh, circular range. It's going to cover a 0 to 360. And every step of the way, this antenna is going to stop at every angle or every one or two degrees is our step size. And every step uh, that uh, is, the turntable is going to stop and the analyzer is going to do a frequency sweep. And then we go to the next step, frequency sweep until we cover the whole uh, rotation. Afterwards, uh, we can post-process the data to get the side VSWR of the uh, measurement setup here. Okay, all right. So Ivo is gonna go start the test. So yeah, call, uh, my colleague Ivo just started the test. Now the turntable is actually uh, start moving. So what's happening is here is that the uh, antenna at the zero position, the analyzer is taking a sweep, getting the magnitude and phase of this response. And then he's stacking, as you can see, the, it's very subtle, the movement, but it's moving at every uh, few degrees. It stops and then it takes a sweep. Over there, you can see it changes from magnitude and phase. For this measurement, we need the vector response measurement. So we need to get both the magnitude and phase. And once we grab that uh, through the whole test process, and this process typically takes about 15 to 20 minutes and after 15 20, uh, to 20 minutes, uh, uh, the rest of it is just a uh, post-processing. Okay, so next step, we're gonna vacate the room and uh, we're gonna start the real test and so that we can look at the data together afterwards. Let's see you on the other side. So we're post-processing the data we just collected on the demo run that we saw earlier. And right now we have uh, measured the distance, offsite distance from the uh, 
for the antenna turntable uh, from the turntable from the center to the edge is point about 0.533 uh, meters. And then the distance between the uh, 3.6 is the distance between the receive antenna to the center of the turntable. And I'm going to go start the processing. And actually, here's the results. Let's uh, let's take a quick look at the 18 gigahertz. So this is actually the uh, the uh, modes you're going to see here uh, in the mode domain that you can see that we filtered and we take the antenna response and filter out the uh, chamber response. And this is actually the antenna pattern. And on the X axis, this is zero to 360. And this is this uh, measurement and uh, antenna pattern that we took when the antenna was offset from the center. And the uh, blue line is the raw data antenna pattern. And the filtered, uh, which is clean up version of the antenna pattern, is the red curve here underneath. Of course, the difference between them is the ripple around the perimeter. So uh, what we show here is on this graph, figure four is the histogram of that distribution of that black curve. And you can see that curve follows a really distribution. And from that really distribution, we can actually calculate the uh, uh, the uh, uh, certain coverage of the VSWR. So in this case, we use 95.5 percentile, and which is the blue uh, vertical bar here, and that gives uh, from this number here we can calculate the VSWR to show the uh, VSWR of that frequency 18 gigahertz, and. Uh, we can take a look at uh, several other frequencies. For example, if I take the frequency to uh, change from 30 uh, gigahertz and um, run it again. Save. Control enter. And then, um, so this is actually the, uh, let's go take a look at, this is the 30 uh, gigahertz um, distribution, which is also, you can see also really distribution is very good description. And you can see this mode filtering, and then this is the antenna pattern uh, and the raw data. And so basically uh, what this program does, actually you can do this at every single frequency. And actually the every time I ran it earlier, it actually did that for all the frequencies. And this chart is actually showing the final results of the 95% coverage of the uh, whole VSWR across the whole frequency range. And you can see this is basically, we, we, we looked at 18 gigahertz and also the 30 gigahertz. And these are the points that I showed individually, but in, in the background, can, you can process all these frequencies all at once, uh, at one after the other and then you would get a curve of the VSWR results. And this is a very robust VSWR. As you can see that uh, the, the uh, um, jaggedness, it's, very, it's not as jagged as the uh, using the true, uh, using the actual max and min of this curve, because the other way to do it, you would find the max number of the peak and the min number of the peak and calculate the VSWR. But that uh, calculation is not as robust because uh, you know, catching the peak or valley is a statistical rare occurrences. And using the uh, standard DV, using the uh, whole distribution of the population to calculate the VSWR, which is the red curve, is a lot more robust than using the blue curve, which is the uh, uh, instantaneous max and mean uh, subtraction. So here you go. This is, uh, you get the, the uh, 18 to 40 gigahertz uh, site VSWR very quickly. And you just saw how quickly the process went. So within seconds, you calculate the whole uh, standing wave uh, process. So the measurement process took about 20 minutes, and the post processing is literally a few seconds. You get the whole VSWR calculation finished.